Hey guys, this is Agent Mindstorm. This is a mini resource pack tutorial that is going to give you instructions on how to animate entity textures. This is not like entity animations as in moving their arms and legs, it's entity animations as in their texture changes like block animations. A uh, quick warning though, this video is not the same as my other resource pack tutorials in that I'm going to give you a full tutorial on everything and you can understand it even if you've never seen a resource pack before. This is intended for people who already understand how to use the entity files, the render controllers, and materials, and even though I'm going to explain how to do it, it would probably be best if you were familiar with them before you watched this video, so it would be very confusing and it's not intended for you. So the first thing you need to do is go to the vanilla resources. There are two files that we need to move to our resource pack. In render controllers, you need the render controller for whatever entity you're going to animate. In this video, as an example, we're animating the cow texture. So we're going to want the cow render controllers, and we're also going to want the file entity.material in the materials folder. Two other things that are useful to open but you don't actually need to use are the entity file for whatever entity it is, so cow.entity.json, and then also the model of whatever entity you have, so cow.geo.json. So these two files are useful for other reasons that we'll get into later, but the only ones that you actually need to put in your resource pack that we're going to modify are render controllers and materials. So I've already put them in here, and you can open them both up in Notepad++ or whatever your text editor is once you've moved them. So the first thing that we need to do for our entity is change its material to be able to use an animation. Any entity file will tell you what the material is. So some have multiple materials because the mob has multiple states, like chicken has chicken and chicken legs. And if you want to do an animated texture, you will have to add the property to all of the materials that you want to be using. The cow only has one material, so that makes it very easy. So we're just going to search for cow in the materials file. Here we are. It's the cow. It's just a basic entity with no added properties. That makes our job very easy. Now some entities do have additional properties already, like the zombie villager v2 or the experience orb, but the one that we're going to be adding can be added to anything, so you don't have to worry about other properties interfering with it. So what you're going to want to type is plus defines colon, and then array brackets, and then in the array brackets you put quotation marks, and then in full caps, use underscore uv underscore anim. So this will allow the entity with these materials to be animated with a uv animation and not just part animations. Save the materials, and once you've added that, you are done with the materials file. Now we only need to edit the render controllers. In the description of this video, I have this UV anim object copied for you. Uh, copy and paste that into your render controllers under the render controller that you want to have animated. So I just put it under the default cow. Some entities do have multiple render controllers, and you put it under the one you want to animate. This UV animation is basically a simple formula that allows you to animate anything as long as it follows the guidelines. So the guidelines are actually identical to that from a normal animated texture, which is very lucky because it could be very inconvenient to have a different system for entity animations and block animations, but no, the texture layout is exactly the same. This is the cow texture we're going to use. It has a total of 10 frames, and each frame is just the typical cow texture stacked on top of each other, exactly the same as the block files. Now the only difference, I guess, is that the each frame is actually the size of the model or the size of the original texture. So for example, the cow model is 64 pixels long by 32 pixels tall. So each frame is going to be 64 by 32, 64 by 32. And that's the only difference. They will have different aspect ratios depending on what your entity is. So what this animation will do is it'll make the cow blink and then the cow will look around a little bit and also some milk will leak from the udders because I had no idea what else I could put on the cow and that's what I decided. So since our cow has 10 frames, we're going to replace every frame underscore count with 10. That's how many frames are in the animation. 10, 10, and 10. So what this down here does is it scales the cow texture so that the game knows each one tenth is one full texture for the model. 
if you don't put this in, it will mess up the thing. So make sure you put in one over frame count as the scale, and then in the offset, this is basically a, an equation that takes the remainder of this number divided by this number, and then divides that by the frame count. Query.lifetime increments one time every second. So it goes one, two, three, which is very convenient, which means that whatever we multiply it by is the frames per second. So if we put one, this texture will now jump one frame every second. So it'll go one, frame two, frame three, frame four. If we put it to 0 0.5, that actually is 0.5 frames per second, which will mean that it changes once every two seconds. It does not do half the texture. Instead, it just changes how often it jumps. So this changes it every two seconds. 0.25 would change it every four seconds. 0.1 would change it every 10 seconds. And you can also do this for higher numbers. 10 changes it 10 times a second. 60 changes it 60 times a second. It's really self-explanatory. So just, we're gonna put one for example purposes. So changes one frame per second. Once you're done with that, make sure that your JSON is correctly formatted as mine is not, and then save the file. You're now done. As long as you added the materials and you added this in the render controllers, and of course you have your texture done, then your mob will be animated. So let's open Minecraft and test it out. Here I have the resource pack enabled. It's just the exact same resource pack I've used in every resource pack tutorial. And we're going to go into a world and we're gonna see if this cow is correctly animated. And look, it just blinked. So there we go, it's animated. Now it's looking to the right, looking to the left, back to the, uh, hmm, cross-eyed stare. There it blinked. And now if we look at the udders, yes, the udders are correctly dripping milk. And as we said, it's going one frame per second. So that's it. It's really that simple to animate textures for entities. It's not as complicated as I used to think it was, and it's surprising that Bedrock Edition actually has this compatibility, but not many people know about it. So, I hope this video helped you. Uh, if you did notice, this video is nowhere near the production value of my other resource pack tutorials. That's why I'm calling it a mini tutorial. This wasn't scripted. I really just did two recordings to get the best one. And if you want to see more mini resource pack tutorials like this in the future, tell me in the comments below. But for now, I do want to tell you all, thanks for watching, and I will see you later.